So straight to the point, uh, we are going to be looking over this next three days about how to overcome lack. How do we overcome lack? So the it's going to be titled Overcoming Lack over this next three days. So today is part one, then, then tomorrow, then on Friday, we're going to wrap this thing up, Overcoming Lack. You will not lack any good thing. Yeah. Our main verse of scripture is in Psalm 34 verse 10, that you know, Psalm 34, you know, verse 10. 34 10 it says the young lions lack and they suffer hunger but those that seek the lord will not lack any good thing yeah. where he says good thing you might as well substitute the word good news yeah. those that seek the lord will not lack any good news you will not lack any good news yeah. you will not lack any good news yeah. in the name of jesus christ yeah. The word lack, if you look at it in different from different angles, just basically means two key things. Uh, number one, it means shortage. Shortage. Shortage of something or shortage of, of a necessity. And also it means absence. Okay. So either way, it means either something, there's a shortfall. Something ought to be this way, but it was this way. There was a shortfall. There's a gap. Shortfall. A shortage or an, a complete absence of the necessity that you require. And when we talk about lack, usually what comes to people's mind immediately is they think immediately of somebody that is impoverished. Depravity, somebody that is completely depraved, impoverished, that cannot even put food on their table. But we have to understand that lack also means shortage. In the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 35, Luke 22:35, 35, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus said to them, when I sent you without money or bag, money bag or knapsack uh, and sandals. Did you lack anything? The word lack as used in this verse does not mean to be impoverished. It means, what it means dominantly is did you fall behind the mates? In other words, all other people that are, that are ambassadors that are sent on errand, because in those days in the context of the Bible, when you send somebody on an errand, they you know, give them um, the means to go on the errand. He could take three days, could take four days, just to take a message from a city like Mississauga to some place like Hamilton, which is about the one-hour drive. To take that could take four or five days just to go and come back. Everything they will need for that journey is given to them. So, so, so they don't lack anything. So Jesus said, "When I also sent you out, did you suffer any lack?" Because I sent you out, I didn't normally when they're going out like that, they you know they give them a donkey and all of that. So they pack everything they will need. You know, there are no grocery stores on the way. So everything they will need for those three, four days, they pack it on their camels and everything to continue to replenish themselves to and fro. And when they're coming back, of course, it depends on the generosity of the person they've gone there to meet. But yet Jesus was sending them and something was counter counterintuitive. He told them, Don't take a knapsack, don't carry a money bag, don't carry more supplies. Just go on your way. So when he came back, and I said, okay, the people that carry stuff when they go, and you that I told not to carry anything, did you fall behind them? In other words, you that you're spending all of your time serving God, are you falling behind your mates that are not serving God? So did you lack anything? So we want to look, look at this lack over the next three days to think of it. Do we lack, did you lack anything? If you had not been a Christian, you have not been serving God, where you ought to be in life today? Did you lack anything? Peter said to Jesus, Master, we have left all. And Jesus answered him. He didn't say, that is an unspiritual question you're asking me. Because he said, we have left all. What shall we have? He answered him and he told him, he said, nobody, absolutely nobody, no matter who you are, nobody, it doesn't have to be pastor, nobody has left anything worthwhile that is of value for God and for the sake of the gospel that will not in this life reap a hundredfold. Amen. So I'd like you to understand that. Let that sink deep into your heart. You are not losing by serving God. Amen. You are not losing by serving God. Amen. Very quickly then, let's look at a few things. What is the will of God concerning lack? Because that's where faith springs up. What is the will of God concerning lack? I'm going to give you three, scrip three scriptures. And they're very, very important. And I'm going to explain them quickly. What is the will of God when it comes to lack? So I'm going to give you a scripture of the faithfulness of God in the life of some people, group of people in the past. The faithfulness of God, his promise for their future. And I'm going to take into the New Testament. So the first scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 7. This is the people of Israel thinking about the story again. And look at what they said. 
For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He knows your trudging through the great wilderness. These 40 years the Lord God has been with you. Keep going. You have lacked what? Nothing. Nothing. Now, anybody that can make sure, see to it, that millions of people together don't lack anything for 40 years must have endless supplies. And he said, you have lacked nothing these 40 years. In other words, in the past, so you have to look at your life and say, some of the times I've been a Christian for 10 years, sometimes when you had a need and you thought to yourself, how is this going to ever work out? God showed up. Yes. Right. So he said, you have lacked nothing. But he takes it further for you to know the will of God. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 6 to 8. Verse 6 to 9, rather. Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 6 to 9. Look at what it says. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Keep going. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Land of brooks of water, fountains and springs, out of valleys and hills. Verse 8. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees. A land of olive and honey. Pay attention to verse 9. A land in which you will eat bread, come on now, without scarcity. In which you will in this land that God is taking you to, how many things will you lack? Nothing. I'm asking you, in this land God is taking you to, what will you lack? Nothing. Will you lack good health? No. Will you lack a, some of those that are single, will you lack a good partner? No. Will you lack financial resources? No. Will you lack spiritual resources? No. Will you lack wisdom? No. Let me ask you the question again, what will you lack? Nothing. nothing. A land in which you will lack nothing. So when we talk about lack, it's not about money only, it's about anything, good health. You can have the money and not have the health. But you lack nothing. Excuse me, sir. Nothing means nothing. Nothing means nothing. Nothing means nothing. You won't have to wake up and say, oh, oh, I wish I had this one. Because you will lack, come on now. You will lack nothing. Nobody will ever, ever have to have to pity you. That's a word directly from God to somebody. You will never be in a position where you will be an object of pity. I, I want to say that one more time on the consciousness of the anointing. You are under the authority of the voice of Jesus Christ today. You will never be in a position in your life when people will pity you. You will be the envy of your family. You will be the envy of your city. The envy of your nation. In the name of Jesus, nobody will pity you. Nobody will have to pity you. In the name of Jesus, your case will not be a sorry case. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, you will lack nothing. In the church, in the early church, in Acts chapter 4, verse 34, Acts of Apostles chapter 4, verse 34, I just need, like you to pay attention to the first phrase. Acts chapter 4, verse 34, there was, nor was there anyone among them who lacked, who lacked. There was nobody who lacked. How many people lacked in the early church? This was a church of thousands of people. Now, as at this stage, now we know that has been written explicitly in the Bible that at least 8,000 people were there. Men. That men that have been counted. Okay? Souls have been counted. This is explicitly. We know there were 3,000 uh, in Acts chapter 2. We know there were uh, five, up to 5,000 by Acts chapter 4. Uh, extra 5,000. So we know that. So this is a church of thousands of people. And the Bible said nobody lacked. You know, when I was studying this, I said to myself, this is amazing. It's amazing what God can do. The Bible says, he that makes the earth his food too. The one that makes the earth his food too. Opens up his hand and feeds everything, everybody at the same time. The one that fed millions of people in the wilderness by opening up the heavens constantly. There is no bakery, no grocery store on earth can continually supply 2.5 million people minimum for 40 solid years. And they will not miss one thing in their chain of supply. But not God, sir. I said not God, sir. When he, was supplying, when he was supplying Elijah, the ravens brought meat and bread in the morning. They brought it in the afternoon. He was like clockwork. The ravens were not tired. Neither did they say one day we, we couldn't do it. They did not miss their way. I'm praying for you. The people bringing good news to you, they will not miss their way to you. They will not miss their way to your life. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Very quickly then, when, what, what we have to look at very quickly then is this. When there is lack, then what causes it? Because that's what the, the, remember the topic is overcoming, overcoming lack. We have to overcome it. So, in order to overcome it, we must know what brings the lack. The Bible already tells us that the young lion do hunger, they hunger and they suffer lack. And you have to understand what this verse is really saying is this the young lion is a symbol of power, strength, you know, skill, energy, 
And, you know, he has natural talent to hunt. But the Bible says even with all of their power, their strength, their natural gifting and skill set and all the power, agility and labor and industry, the Bible says they can still hunger. So that automatically should tell you that with everything you have, your best bet is to submit it under God. You are a smart person and everything. Please don't split your smartness above, above the word of God. Submit it to God. Understand that your smartness was given to you by God. Uh, you know, this, this is, I'm telling you, it's taking some people many years to understand this concept. They're smart and they think that automatically because they're smart, they're on the same level with God. Please don't learn about God like Manasseh did. Don't let God put a hook in your nose. And the Bible says that Manasseh, in his affliction, Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Don't learn about God through affliction. Don't do that. Try to understand right away that he that gives wisdom, is, should he not be, will he not be wise? Will you not be wise? Don't think that you are smart, you will outsmart God. There is no wisdom anywhere on earth that will beat the wisdom of God. The young lions. So don't put yourself in the category of the young lions. Strength. And I have it. I know it. Don't put yourself in such category. The Bible says because they will hunger. And they will lack. But the Bible says that but if you switch, if you switch to those who seek the Lord. So let's, 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 let's explore this a bit. What causes lack? Let's look at two things. Number one, and I want you to pay attention because many people will argue theologically because of different things they've had that is not well balanced in the scripture about, oh, this is not possible. So I want you to look at a set of scripture. 2 Samuel chapter 3, let's start from verse 26 to 28. 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 26 to 28. I want you to look at this set of scripture and look at what David said. Joab had gone to David's, gone from David's presence. Let's start from verse 25. 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 25. Surely he realized that Abner, the son of Ner, came to deceive you. This is what Joab said to David. You know, to know you're going out and to know you're coming in. To know all that you are doing. Verse 26. And when Joab had gone out of David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sirah. But David did not know it. And Abner had returned to Hebron. Joab took him aside in the gates to speak with him privately. And then he stabbed him. He stabbed him in his stomach. So that he, what happened? He died. He died. Okay, now look at verse 28. When David heard of it, when David heard, he said, My kingdom and I shall be guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner, the son of Anah. Quickly. Why? Then he now, look at what David now said. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. Let there never fail to be in the house of Joab. One who has a discharge, one, or is a leper, two, or lives on a staff, three, or falls by the sword, four, or lacks bread. Five. So David is, this is what David is saying. David is saying, from now on, Job did not bear this cause in his own. He had gone. He said, but in the house of Job, pay attention to that word, house of Job. David said, from then on, at least there will be one person that will pick one of these five afflictions. Is that like they will have a discharge? That is a long story. We could talk about that some other time. It's a leper, leans on the staff, Forced by the sword. I just read the story of a man, a woman, and a man, 30, 30 year old man, 28 year old woman that got married. 15 days after they got married, they were going on their honeymoon. The girl slept off, was driving. It was on Fox News. The girl slept off a bit immediately, slept off. The car was veering towards the road, corrected it, but overcorrected it. Some assaulted, both of them died. 30 year old, 28 year old, 15 days after they got married, both of them died. Forced by the sword. That's the case. Forced by the sword. That's the case. That's not a road accident. That is something that is an arranged, arranged stuff in the spiritual. It's for all lacks bread. So that means there's somebody that bears Joab. No matter they might have been to Harvard, been to Princeton. No matter they just can't work with that certificate. They can't work with it. They lack bread. The problem is not what they have done or what they've not done. It's what Joab did. Now, and I know immediately what goes through people's mind. Because, you know, people, people are, they are theoreticians, they're not practitioners. I'm a practitioner. What goes through people's mind is, oh, but Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. This is not the curse of the law. No. Theolo theologically speaking, this, this curse that David pronounced upon Joab's house is not the curse of the law. The curse of the law is what is written in the book of Deuteronomy, which happens when you break the law. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. That happens when you break the law of God. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. It shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandment, commandment and the statutes which I command you today. That these causes, now these are the causes of the Lord then. Okay. Now let me say something to you. Those all, but, 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 but when Christ came, didn't he just say that everything was over? Pay attention please. When we sin, okay, 
when we sin. There is a God part, there is a man part. I'll talk about this a bit more on Friday. Usually, it depends on the type of sin. Because every sin is not the same. That's another lie people have. They say, oh, all sins are the same. All sins are not the same. All sins are not the same. So, maybe on Friday, I'll talk a bit more about that. There are sins that are greater than the other. It's very, very, the scriptures talks about that. Eh? So, when, particularly for our young girls that are here, you know, your friends will say, oh, but, but all sins are this. All sins are not the same. They are not the same. Okay? Somebody that commits murder is not the same. It's not the same. As somebody that, 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 you know, I don't want to say some other things so that you don't say that that is, that is, that is okay. <laughs> see, well, pastor said that is okay. But, but it's, so it's not, it's not the same. All sins are not the same. Jesus made us understand that, you know. So we got to, we got to, and I will show you that on Friday. But, but, uh, 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 subsequently. So we got to understand this. This, this is the curse of the law. When there is a sin, particularly things like murder. Let's, let's take murder, for example, because it was the first dominant explicitly spoken of sin in the Bible. When Cain killed Abel. All right. What happens is that there are two, two parts. There's a God part of it. There's a God part of it. Okay? That's the spiritual part of the sin. But there's also a man part of the sin. It's called the social part of the sin. I'm talking theology now. Remember? Uh, uh, the person talking to you. <laughs> you know? So I'm talking theology now. The God part of the sin, the spiritual part, is what repentance deals with. So when you repent before God, that God part, God what part, is taken care of. Are you following now? You repent, somebody commits murder and a boom, kill somebody. And so, oh God, I'm so sorry. Lord, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Psh, that God word part is done. Are you forgetting? The blood of Jesus has taken care of which part now? The God word part. So, in the place where God is going to make a decision as a person, which is whether you come into heaven or not, and all of that kind of stuff, that God word part is resolved for you. But there's a man word part. That man word part is called the social part of sin. This is theology now. And the technical word for it in theology is that repentance doesn't cure that part. Restitution does. Are you with me at all? <laughs> so that's the place where you need to restitute. Rest, you have to restitute. And this is a very important time because sometimes when we're, when we're, as parents, when we're dealing with our children, because they know that we're Christians, so they do something that is wrong. And you tell them, you got to... I'm, I'm upset with you. You have to go to your room and go and, you know, kind of like lock them down in their room. Go stay there in your room. You say, but daddy, I've already said I'm sorry. Yes. Father, I remember one, small, one boy that used to tell me that uh, I, I already repented before God. I said, yeah, that's before God. <laughs> I said, God has forgiven you. It's true. He said, but I already, told to, I already spoke to God. I repented. I said, God has forgiven you. I said, but I'm still dealing with you. <laughs> I'm the, this is the man part. And this is the part that confuses people. You see, so you have to understand that the God part, you will go to heaven. But the social part is not dealt with, please listen very carefully, by the person of God. It's dealt with by the principles of God. This is theology now. So the principles of God will take over because the principles have been set up. They've been set up. The principles have been set up. They are not going to, so they will take over that social part. The principles of God is what takes care of the social part. It takes care of the social part. But the person of God is what brings us into heaven. The person of God has forgiven you the sin, the God word part, but the principles of God will take over. That's why Jesus Christ said in one place, he said, I do not, have not come to judge anybody. He said, but the words that I have spoken, they will judge them. In other words, the principle have set in place. So when it comes to seed time and harvest, social sins, particularly when uh, anybody that has spiritual authority over you, like our parents, biological parents, have gone, they've done all manners of things to, so, for social injustice against people. People that were lived with them, that were brilliant, that needed to go to school, that they did not send to school. They refused their education. So their own child went to school. Then their child goes to school, they come out of the school, they can't do well. Because there's social injustice. Look at the woman, the, 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 was going, the, the viral video that was going around, the woman that took her children and domestic help to a restaurant. The domestic help ordered good food for the, for the children. The domestic help was giving one cookie to be breaking the cookie and eating the cookie. That 11-year-old girl doesn't need to be spiritual. In her heart, curse those children. Yeah. Those children come out, they go to Harvard, Princeton, Yale, they come out of the place, they cannot put food on their own table because of what their mother did. So this has got nothing to do with repentance. This has got something to do with restitution. I hope you understand. Yes. For better light, go and read 2 Samuel chapter 21 and see the story of David. And see that what Saul did. David was anointed three times, right? 
and is the man after God's own heart. And so what Samuel, what David did. And what David did when there was famine for three consecutive years, and the famine will not go away. David prayed, fasted, did everything he needed to do, the famine will not go away. What did David do? He went to inquire of God. And God told him, he's got nothing to do with you. It's a blood testing house of Saul. So God said, okay, so he said, all right, all right, I'm so sorry. What do I do now? What am I going to do? God said, not the problem. You go to ask the Jabesh Gilead people what they want. And they asked them, and they said, we don't want them. Just give us seven sons of David. Of Saul, rather. They gave them the seven sons. They killed them. They hung them. That same day, the rain started falling. Second Samuel 21, go back home and read it. That same day, the, 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 there, was, there was rain. So this is bad. That is why you and I must cry out for God's mercy of the things that some of us have done. And that's why I also want to say to somebody here, if you are here, listen to me. Two of these crimes that people commit today that they say is victimless crime. <laughs> you got to be very careful. If you're here. You got to be very, very, very careful. You know, so you got to make sure that you don't, you don't, you don't. I'm not talking of, I'm not talking of, I'm talking of what people do now, these, these days. You got to be very, very careful. You have to be extremely careful. You have to be extremely careful. I preached one time, one man was very upset with me one day. He just he saw me at the door. He was upset. This was 12 years ago, 13 years ago. He was he was walking, he just walked out of the door. I said, okay. Okay. You see, because he was carrying his child. And I was telling you that the decisions you are making today is affecting this child. He didn't like what I was saying. He didn't like what I was saying. He was upset. Listen to me very carefully then. So that's what we have to ask for God's mercy. And in specific instances, when God speaks to us, we have to make restitution. If there has been social injustice, like the one I just said now, about domestic help, working with your parents or nephews or nieces, living with them, and they mistreated them, you have to go look for an orphanage, people that are also helpless today, and help them. That's part of the restitution. I hope this makes sense. You, this, you, will not, somebody, you will not hear all of these type of things normally in a prayer meeting. That's why you go, people go for prayer meeting, prayer, 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 and nothing is working. Because they don't understand the technicalities behind this stuff. Find out what have your parents done. Find out what have your grandfather, what did he do? Before he became the chief and the head of the village, who did he destroy? He got this powerful position, but who did he override? Who was supposed to be there that he terminated their lives? That he messed up their, their children? Then you're going to find out. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Restitution. Now, let's, we're going to deal with that in a minute. Because Psalm 34 verse 10, sorry, Psalm 30 verse 10 tells us that God is going to have mercy upon us. Amen. Then you're going to go out there and deal with stuff. You're going to go out there and restitute. Okay, because we want to pray. Quickly then, what else? We, we're talking about overcoming lack, right? Yeah. Overcoming lack. So we first, the first one is a personal case, the case of Satan and harvest. The second one I want to mention is spiritual attack. Spiritual attack. And this is Deuteronomy 28.57. Deuteronomy 28, 57. Spiritual attack. Look at what it says. It says, uh, don't, don't focus too much on the area of the placenta stuff, but I want you to focus on this. But I'll read the whole thing. Her placenta which comes out from between her feet and her children from whom she bears, for she will eat them secretly for lack of everything in the siege at desperate streets in which your enemy shall distress you at the gates. At the gate, then all of your gates, it says actually, that is the place where through which people will bring goods in. In the Old Testament, in the olden days, in the days when the Bible was written, it's very obvious no goods, no good news will ever come into the city if the enemies control the gates. And this is a picture of our lives. We don't have physical gates, but we have gates into our lives in the realm of the spirit. If the gates of your life is controlled by the forces of darkness, no good news is coming. And for you to understand about control, that you can have gates and you don't control the gates. It was a prayer that God, a blessing that God blessed Abraham with. Genesis 22, 17. Look at what it says. Genesis 22, 17. The blessing that God Almighty pronounced on Abraham. He said, your descendants shall do what? Possess the gates of their enemy. So somebody can have, so God, God is the one acknowledging that people have gates. And he's saying that you can have a gate and not control the gates. But it's for us are a blessing when we control the gates of our enemies. But the enemies also try to do the same thing, to control the gates. How, the person that controls the gates to your life control the flow, the rate of the good news. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes because they don't want you to stress yourself too much, they don't want you to go on one long fast. They just allow one good news to come once in three years. Once, in, once they see that you are already you get agitated, you want to get spiritual, they allow one or two things to just come your way. 
so that you, you realize, say, hey, so at least God now have mercy on me now. God has had mercy on me. But it's not about God's mercy. It's not about God's benevolence at that point. It's about you rising up and comforting the gates. You have to take charge of the gates. I, 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 let me speak this because I know some pastors are also watching this somewhere, somewhere across the world. Listen very carefully because I, I know that many pastors have written me also. You have to understand this, my brother and my sister, my fellow worker. I'm not saying this out of pride. I'm not saying this out of anything. I'm saying this out of, as one that is privileged, uh, privileged and one that, I say, that is enjoying the mercy of God Almighty. Please, my brother and my sister that is watching, please understand, your church must possess the gates of the area in which you are in. If those gates are not possessed, those that control those gates will determine who comes to your church and who leaves. So the gates to that place must be seized completely by you so that you control what happens to that place. Selah. <laughs> How do we control these gates quickly so that we stop right now? Have you been blessed at all already? Yes. How do we control these gates? The first thing and just only one we, you have to see today is this. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 110, 110, verse 1 to 3. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. That's complete control. When your enemies become your footstool, that is now when you are in complete control. Okay, verse 2 says, the Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You see that complete control. Verse 3, your people then shall become volatiles in the days of your power. Okay, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, you have the deal of your, of your youth. Go back to verse 1 and I will show you. The key to the control, to start with, this is the first key, is to sit down. That's what he said. Sit. At my right hand. Is to sit down. The biggest battle you are going to be facing, and sometimes people don't know it's warfare, is that you will be finding it difficult to sit down with this Bible. And people don't know that that's warfare. They think that the warfare is when you lose your job. They think the warfare is when something happens to your house or some, your car breaks down or your child says they're sick. That, that is the secondary or tertiary level of the warfare. The primary warfare, the way you know that the warfare has started is that you can't do your devotion anymore. The warfare has started. Don't wait until, until you see something manifest physically before you get agitated. Once Monday has gone, you can't do devotion. Tuesday. Wednesday. Excuse me. You're struggling with devotion. By Thursday, you take your Bible, you look at it, you're not interested. Friday, you're even depressed. You don't like to read it in. You're saying God should just God should do something. Listen to me. The warfare is already overtaking you. Sit down. That's the first thing. Anytime they are pulling you away from sitting down, they're pulling you towards defeat. They're pulling anything that is pulling you away from sitting down is pulling you towards defeat. Some people can sit down in church. They're up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Sit down. That is why if you don't have a, I know that you came for a prayer meeting, we're going to pray in a minute. If you don't have a study Bible, go and invest. That hundred dollars you will spend on a study Bible. You know, I have not written any study Bible, so I have no personal interest. The hundred dollars, one twenty dollars you will spend in buying the study Bible is the best investment you will make in your life. Because inside that book is everything you need. And when you buy it, then what do you do? You sit down. You sit down, sir. Sit down. That's it. You sit down. It is when you sit down. You see, because you cannot, and I cannot make my enemies my footstool. I can't. But somebody else can. But the person has said, you, we are going to do it together. Your job is to sit down. Let me now do it. But if you don't sit down, I can't do it for you. The way I take over the battle is that when you have sat down. Because when you sit down, it's when you find something. When you don't sit down, you can't find something. This is a very powerful thing. Sit at my right hand. In the book of Ephesians, you must sit before you can walk, before you can stand. In chapter 1 and 2 in Ephesians, it tells us where we're sitting. 3 and 4, it tells us how we walk. In 5 and 6, it says, stand therefore, my brother. So people are trying to stand without first sitting. They are seated in heavenly places. That's it. You've got to be sitting. When you sit then, it's when things enter your spirit. That's when you rise up from that place. And you say, no, 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 no. I can't have a lot. Because you now have something that God can fight with. I hope this has made sense to somebody here. So we're going to pray for mercy to terminate curses in a minute. We're going to confront the gates of the enemy. Too many of us have left this thing. We're going to confront the gate of the enemy and tear down the strongholds. 
then you are going to receive grace to do what? To sit down. Before you come tomorrow night, someone said, I don't have time. You will have time. Before you come tomorrow night, you must, you must eat. I'm not talking of greed. You must eat six chapters. So I'm going to give you that in a minute. Remind me, make sure I don't forget. Six chapters. What must you do? Eat it. Eat. No, not read. Eat. Eat means you, are, you take it in and you are chewing the thing. Before you come, you will see that you are different. As you are coming to the service, when you shake hands with somebody, the person will go back a bit. Something, electricity will enter their body because you have eaten. Before I stand up from my bed, I, there, is, there, is, there is dosage to take before I stand up from the bed. Because the warfare is everywhere. Before you get to the washroom, somebody can say, I woke up my bed, I was going to the washroom, I broke my leg. <laughs> warfare is everywhere. Before I stand up, there is a dosage to take. After you stand up, you come back again, dosage. You must have those. A Bible is everywhere in my house. Bible everywhere. You anywhere you turn, you just pick one. You just continue what you. So what I've been reading, what I've been reading in my basement, when I come up in, by the kitchen, and there's another Bible. If I go upstairs, I don't need to go back to the basement. I can continue with that one there. You continue everywhere, and of course, I always have my phone in my pocket. Anywhere I'm going, I'm taking the work. Even when I'm driving, sometimes I just park because I have to connect connect with something. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the warfare is everywhere. Anything that prevents you from sitting down. Some of you have not sat down in three weeks. Some of you one month. And it's showing in your face. Six chapters. Are, we with, are you with me now? Yes. How many chapters now? Yes. Okay. So Deuteronomy chapter 4, 5, and 6. Deuteronomy. The, the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. Actually, I'm making the same chapters now. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 5, and 6 is a lot. But so I'm going to make it easier. Colossians chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. It's small. Someone says, how can I do that before I come tomorrow? I can't do it. You can do it. Just, just start from tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 5, and 6. Right? Colossians 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Can you do that? Stand on your feet like a champion. For all of our young adults, you need to read. You have time. All of our young adults, you have a lot of time in your hand. Too much time. You need to read this thing in translations. All of our young adults, this is what we should, you're going to sit down. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray tonight? Have you gained something tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Leave those hands. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's worship the one that has no lack. The one that is called the El Shaddai. Father, we want to praise your name. Nakalabo Satangalaya. Lift those hands, lift those hands, glorify his name. Shipa yike ruzini ma pamba yike lelele bo sata. Ne kuge lizi nikili shi pamba yike le ma mama. Somebody worship the Alpha. Somebody worship the Omega. Somebody give praise. Give praise to the ancient of days. Come and glorify his name. 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 Magnify the one that was, that is, and there is to come. Glorify he who is the most high God. Glorify him. Magnify his name. Nantale setoboshkeya. Shibrandia kindini. Anjinotombo katengele maya. Are you praising him? Are you praising him? Are you praising him? Are you praising the I am that I am? Are you praising the one that is called the Redeemer? Are you praising the one that is called the Resurrection and the Life? There is no good news that is far gone. No, nothing that is far gone that God cannot change. He is the God of good news how beautiful upon the mountains is the feet of him that brings good news there is no situation that god cannot change he that turned the dry bones in the valley of ezekiel he that turned those dry bones into a great army there is nothing he cannot turn around he's the god of the irreversible he's this god that specializes in the impossible come on somebody come on praise this god glorify the name of this lord praise him with a dance all by yourself praise him with a shout all by yourself praise him with a shout Bless him, bless him, bless him. Don't worry about the person to your right or to your left. The Bible says that those that seek him will not lack any good thing. Those that seek him will not lack any good thing. Come on, let's seek him in praise. Let us seek him in prayer. Let's seek him in praise. Let us seek him in prayer. Mandili zuri ali. Shinga ni rekuzi ni meni ya nduria. Shilengri ndu ni mekungeli ndrikidia. Come on, somebody, let's praise him. Let us seek him in the place of prayer. Let us seek him in the place of prayer. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. Let us worship him. Let us praise his name. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. 
Is there shame the world is? Is the one that was? Is the one that is? He is the one that is to come. There's no one like him. Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shikenu, Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Rafa. Come and glorify his name. He's the El Shaddai. Nobody else like him. We worship him, our God. Nobody else like him. He's worthy of to be praised. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. Come on, somebody worship this God. Bless him. Bless this God. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Don't worry about who is to your right or to your left. They may not be praising God. They don't know the value of your God. They don't know the value of your God. But you know the value of your God. You know that if it had not been for this God, you wouldn't even be where you are today. Come on, praise him. Praise him. The Lord share it. She brought in his sweet little animal. She got it in regular sintavia. She got mad in green dule sintavina. Somebody praise, 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 praise him. Oh, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Alpha and Omega, we worship it. Oh, somebody ought to praise this God. Oh, we worship your God. You are worthy to be praised. You got another two minutes. I'm not going to leave you until you praise this God. We are going to praise this our God together. We are going to magnify his name together. We are the true worshippers in the house tonight. Jile Varunga Sintalia. La Ruzenim Rigli Nibosia Baya. Oh, worship you, Lord. Arriba Boshaya. My creator, my master, my head, I worship you, Jesus. My leader, my savior, my propitiation, my ransom, my sacrifice. I worship you, Jesus. I bow before you. I bow. Please honor this God. Let us honor this God together. Let's honor him. Oh God, we honor you. Thank you, Lord. Bless up your name. We've got another one more minute. Let us praise this God together with everything. Let everything that has bread. 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 Praise. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, we worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised. Father, as a people, we want to praise you. We want to acknowledge you, the initiator of good news, the transporter of good news, the deliverer of good news. We worship you. Be exalted forevermore. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. First prayer point, Psalm 30, verse 10. Mercy. Psalm 30, verse 10, please. Hear, O Lord, have mercy on me. I want you from now on to be my helper. Lift your voice and ask God for mercy, O God. Mercy. Mercy, O God. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Le Rabago Shagatayan. Zilemam Bragoroboskayama. Please talk to the Almighty God. Mercy, O oh God, I need your mercy. Shinima Grizzly Minigin Giribosia Shagita Nika Lita Marigalea. Whatever, O oh God, has been in place. Oh God, as a result of social injustice, in the Akishiku family, in the Otenibaku family, Shakatinga Librangudoskaya. Oh God, I will affect your oh God, my own children today in the name of Jesus. Mercy, oh God, mercy. Mercy, oh God, mercy. 
Somebody open your mouth and pray in the Shataya. I need your mercy, O oh God. I need your mercy, O oh God. I need you to be my helper. I cannot afford to be helpless, O oh God. I can't afford it if you don't help me. Where am I going to go? Lord, I cannot afford it if you don't help me. I need your help, Almighty and everlasting God. If you don't help me, I can't get help from any other place. If you don't show up for me, that seat is over for me. I need your presence. I need you, O oh God. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I will see you in my door. Thank If you don't help me, Lord, I can't get help from any other place. That's it for me. That means it's over for me. Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't help me, then it's over for me. I need your help. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Whatever, oh God, is in place, whatever will be a barrier between you and me and between me and you, oh God, that will not make you help me. That will not allow you to stretch out your hand to help me. Please, Lord, have mercy on me today. Mercy, oh God, mercy. Let your mercy take it out of the way, oh God. Marisa Liki Shimayi, Sharusanima Pandilayina, Shigale Preketalibo, Shibandrizo Dunamayan, Aklenduro Baba 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 Baba, Shipayi Ketelema, O Shikene, O Shikani, O Shikene, Kene, 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 O Shikane, Kane, Kane. Breton no baba ba sineye shi dene marose ne taro shati yai ariere ariye ye 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 saroto bodo santalia anjin tomba ruske ya anjile ruso tomba ye jimpante ke marobo skete bayina alie baye alie baye bo 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 shaka god i need a message whatever oh god will stop you from favoring me anything that will stop you from helping me lord whatever barrier whatever is in place mercy today mercy oh god whatever the cause of it whatever the reason for it lord let there be mercy let there be mercy mercy oh god have mercy upon me oh god i'm calling upon you today mercy oh god thank you lord i receive your mercy i receive your mercy I receive your mercy, O oh God. I receive your mercy, O oh God. Lord, I receive your mercy. My Father, my God, I receive mercy from you. Mercy, O oh God. You are the God that is abundant in mercy. Don't exclude me out of your mercy. Don't lock me out of your mercy, O oh God. Whatever will, is a barrier, whatever will stand between me and you, that will not allow you to favor me or to perfect that which you want to do in my life. Oh God, I pray for mercy today. I need this mercy, oh God, because I need your help. I need your help. I am completely helpless without you. I am completely helpless without you. I don't have anybody that will help me if you don't help me, oh God. I have no plan B. I have no plan B. There is no plan B. I need your help, oh God. I need your help, oh God. Lord, if you don't show up for me, it's over for me. I need your help, oh God. Help me, oh God. You are my only help. You are my only source. You are the one that can help me, oh God. People that are willing to help me, they don't have the power. People that have the power, they might not be willing. You are the only one that has the power and the willingness and the love to help me. God, I need your help. You are the only one that qualifies to help. I need your help, oh God. So Lord, have mercy upon me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mercy, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I'd like you to hold that completely. Hold the music completely. Hold it completely. Father, we 
we have come to you tonight as your children. We have come to you tonight not based on our qualifications, not even based on the fasting we've had. According to your word in Hebrews 10, 19, you said we should approach the Holy of Holies by the blood. By reason of the blood of your precious and only son, Jesus Christ, we have come into your presence today, Father. Father, we need your mercy. We don't qualify for it. We have not earned it. But Lord, we need your mercy. We need your mercy, Lord. We have to be honest with ourselves because we need your help. And if you don't help us, we are vulnerable. We are at the point, oh God of heaven, that the enemy is just waiting to laugh at us and to attack us. Lord God of heaven, we cannot afford to be outside of your covering. God of heaven, please help us, oh God. We acknowledge that our fathers have wronged you. We acknowledge that even we ourselves, we have wronged you. But God of heaven, we are at a point today that if you don't have mercy on us, it's over for us. We don't have any other option. We don't have any other person we can run to on the air. We have many people that love us, but they don't have the power to change the situation. You are the only one that can love us and also have the power to change it. God of heaven, the uncreated creator, the unchangeable God, please help us, oh God. Please, Lord, have mercy upon us. Father, whatever will have to make you think twice before blessing us, whatever will make you hesitant, whatever will make you change your mind, whatever will make you have a second thought, oh God, about releasing the fullness of your blessing upon us. Today, by reason of the blood of Jesus, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. By faith, we receive your mercy. By faith, we receive your mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. When I was coming in this afternoon, this evening, I prepared that we're going to pray the second prayer point that God will give us good news. But I heard God say to me now, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6, look at what it says. Look at what it says. I heard God speak to my heart now. Keep on going, keep on going, please. The Lord himself is bringing you into a good land. I heard God say to me that if I bring, give you good news, it's not as powerful as me bringing you into good news. Uh, uh, so the prayer point has changed. It's not now God give me good news. It's Lord bring me into goodness. Lift your voice and ask him. Lord bring me to goodness. Bring me into this good land of goodness. Bring me into goodness. Into the season of good news. Everywhere, everything, everything I touch, everywhere I go, good news everywhere. Concerning my children, good news. Concerning my wife, good news. Concerning my extended family, good news. Concerning my father, good news. My siblings, my nieces, my nephews, good news. Concerning your church, house of praise, good news. Concerning the ministry you've entrusted into my hands, good news. Concerning every area of my life, good news. Just bring me into this season of good news. Father, bring me into the season. Bring me into the arena of good news. I thank you for the good news you've given me in time past. I'm grateful. I'm not complaining at all. I'm grateful. But your word says we should ask you until our joy be full. I'm asking of you tonight. Please, Lord, bring me into the season of good news. Bring me, oh God, into the season of good news. Bring me to the place of good news. Whereby, oh God, I don't need to walk around. I don't need to look around. I just see good news everywhere. Everywhere I turn to, I cannot but have good news. Bring me, oh God, into this place of good news. Bring me into this season of good news. Whereby I'm not getting good news once in a while. I'm not getting good news concerning one or two issues. But I'm just swimming in good news. I'm having good news concerning my health. I'm having good news concerning my wife. I'm having good news concerning my children. Concerning my finances. Concerning my spiritual life. Concerning every area of my life. Concerning my ministry. Concerning your church house of praise. Concerning my siblings. Concerning my dad. Concerning my nieces, my nephews. I'm just having good news. Everywhere good news. 
every day good news every hour good news let it be so bring me to this season of good news church open your mouth and pray lord bring me bring me to the good news so that good news every day every hour of the day it is just good news good news galore good news galore lord bring me to this season of good news bring me to this area of good news bring me to this arena of good news I thank you because I was going to pray, Lord, that you will give me goodness. But by your Holy Spirit now, you are saying we should ask you that you should bring us into the season of goodness. So I'm asking you tonight, Father, bring me, Lord, take me, Lord, move me into the arena of goodness. Whereby when I look around me, it's all goodness. When I turn to my left, it's goodness. When I look to my right, it's goodness. When I move forward, it's goodness. When I stand still, it's goodness. When I look behind me, it's goodness. Everywhere I turn, everywhere I go, when I look everywhere I turn, Lord, is all goodness. Goodness everywhere. In the morning when I wake up, it's goodness. In the afternoon, it's goodness. In the evening, it's goodness. At night, before I go to bed, it's goodness. Everywhere I go, goodness. Lord, I pray, let it be so, let it be so. When I ask about my children, goodness. When I ask about my wife, goodness. I ask about any area of my life, goodness. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. When I go for my annual physical checkup, when a doctor, goodness, goodness. When I eat my finances, it's all goodness. When I come to church and I see your church house of praise, it's goodness. When I look at the ministry you have entrusted into my hands, it's goodness. When I look at my spiritual sons and daughters, it's goodness. Everywhere, goodness. Lord, let it be so. Concerning my spiritual life, goodness. Concerning my emotional life, goodness. Concerning my mental life, goodness. My psychology, goodness. My body, goodness. Goodness everywhere. Goodness the Lord. Chili Brababa. That I will have testimonies to share every hour of the day. Bring me into this season. Bring me into this season. Bring me into this season. You are bringing us, bringing us into the good land. Bring me into this season of my life. Of goodness everywhere. Goodness everywhere. Goodness every day. Goodness every time. Let it be so. Oh God, let it be so. Reza Kitia. She does it alone. Ementendele Pradoboskaya. Shalita Nilia. Adio Roto Ligesia. I'm pronto Bosia. Shatia Le Pradoboskaya. Saint Elimaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hebrews 11 11. Hebrews 11 11 says, By faith, Sarah herself received. She received by faith. Lord, by faith, I receive the goodness now. By faith, come on now. I receive goodness now. Everywhere now I receive goodness. From the right, I receive goodness. From the left, I receive goodness. Everywhere I turn, I receive goodness. In front of me, goodness. Behind me, I, re- I take the goodness. Everywhere I turn, goodness. To my right hand side, I take goodness. To my left hand side, I receive the goodness. Everywhere I receive goodness. Concerning my children, I hear about them. It's goodness now. Goodness, I'm hearing now. When I hear everything, goodness. The doctor's report, I hear goodness. Goodness. When I look at the finances, goodness. Goodness. Goodness, Lord. Oh, when I look at your church, house of place, it's goodness now. I can see goodness all around. Goodness all around everybody. In every area. When I think of the ministry you have given me, I look at the ministry you've entrusted into my hands. I see goodness. I see goodness. Lord, I look at the country of Nigeria. Oh God, where my dad is. Oh God, my half family is there. Goodness, 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 goodness. Concerning everybody, goodness, 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 goodness. goodness. I begin to receive the goodness now. Lord, I take the goodness now. By faith, Sarah received it. I also by faith. I begin to receive goodness. For you are the same yesterday. You are the same today. You are the same forever and evermore. So I take goodness. I take it now. I take it now. I take it now. I take it now. I take up the goodness now. Thank you, Lord. Unto you be the glory. Unto you be the praise forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. 
Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Grace to sit down. Tonight, between tonight, in the next 24 hours. It's almost like, ah, this seven chapters is too difficult. No, no, no. Grace to sit down. I said grace to sit down. And as you sit down, you will understand it. Come on, begin to receive that grace right now. I receive the grace to sit down and to understand. I receive the grace to read and to understand. I receive the grace to apply myself and to understand. Paul the apostle says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I receive the grace to manage my time. I receive the grace to find the time. And I receive the grace to manage my time. I receive the grace. I am what I am by the grace of God. I receive that grace. I will do it. I am determined to do it. I have set my face like a flint. I have made up my mind. I'm going to do it. So Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. I know it's not my power or my mind, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So I receive grace to sit down. I want to sit down so that you can make my enemies my footstool. I need this revelation knowledge that comes by sitting down at the right hour. So Lord, as I sit down, I receive grace to understand. I receive grace for revelation knowledge. I receive grace for insight. Let the entrance of your word give light to me. Let your word enter my spirit man. Let revelation enter my spirit man. Let revelation enter my spirit man. Grace to sit down. I take authority over every distraction of the enemy and every device of the enemy to distract me, to stop me from sitting down. May all such weapons be destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. May the plans of the enemy to distract me, to prevent me from sitting down. May those plans be null fight in Jesus name I receive grace to sit down I will do it I will do it I have made up my mind I've set my face like a flint I receive the grace thank you Lord in Jesus mighty name we are praying Amen. Genesis 22 17 God blessed Abraham because Abraham sacrificed and God said to Abraham it's a blessing God has given Abraham he said your descendants shall possess what the gates of the enemy now, when you think about it, to possess the gates of your enemy. If you can possess the gates of your enemy, then you should possess your own gates. Uh, you should possess your own gate. Uh, this is people saying we're going to possess the gates of our enemy, but what about our own gate? And if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's descendant? So, I am a seed of Abraham. Say that with me now. Say it again. I am a seed of Abraham. Say it. We're saying it to the realm of the spirit. I am a seed of Abraham. Say it. Announce it to the realm of the spirit. I am a seed. Say it. Say it into the spirit world. I am a seed of Abraham. Shout it out one more time. I am a seed of Abraham. Now begin to possess your own gates right now. Possess your gates. I take charge of my gates. I take charge of my gates. I rebuke every enemy at my gates. I bind every demonic spirit. Every spiritual force. Every force of spiritual wickedness. At the gates of my life, I bind you in Jesus' name. You foul demonic spirit. I am a seed of Abraham. It is written, if anybody be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. I no longer belong to my natural family only. I am a seed of Abraham. According to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, I am a seed of Abraham. I am a seed of Abraham. And it is written, the blood today into the blessing of God. The blessing of God upon Abraham my father. Upon Abraham my father. It declares it is written. I will possess the gates of my enemy. Therefore today in the name of Jesus I possess first and foremost my own gates. The gates into my life from the north. The gates into my life from the east. The gates into my life from the west. The gates into my life from the south. I possess them today in Jesus name. I possess all the gates into my life. All the gates into my life. I possess them today. Satan, get out of my gates. Satan, get out of my gates. You foul demonic spirits. Get out, get out, get out, get out of my gates. I subdue you tonight in Jesus' name. Church, open your mouth and pray. La dona zahile, eje prezeneya, shigadiya kata, alleru ziniya, shi pradina moshenta ye, elleru zoniya mayi, shatongon doniya ye, eje remadoni kiji, adjonin tandeliya. I am a seed of Abraham. I will possess the gates of my enemy. Therefore, I must possess my own gates. She parigasia. Satan, you cannot, you cannot obstruct my gates. Get out of my gate. You foul demonic spirit standing at the gates of my life. Standing at the gates of my life. Preventing good news in my family. Preventing good news in my in my life. Preventing good news in my ministry. Preventing good news. In
in the church of God, house of praise. I take authority over you right now. I bind the forces of darkness in the name of Jesus. It is written at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. Therefore, wherever you are located, you follow the morning spirit. Manipulating my gate. Oh, Narima Tusha, dear. I take authority over you right now. I bind you in Jesus' name. You will not stop the resources from reaching me. You will not stop my resources from reaching me. You will not stop good news. You will not obstruct my, my opportunities again. You will not stop my opportunities in the name of Jesus. Shakataye and Lerizo Nimoshke. Shimba Ruzenim. Shantile Remeduskia. Shakitele Lele. Shakitele Lele Lele. La limbo bobo la li la bile la bile la bile la bile la bile la bila il est bire bise 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 bia se prise qui est elia si rando ni a tous que ya a que raisonnier en domite rubo senta bia si pra domica luce ni a te a que libre te clen de nuevo sia si bra 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 si bra 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 si go lo le 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 boscar a te libre que dice a te libre que dice si sa tu a quinta y sa robo y sa roba y sa ruse ni Ante Sadoma Piale Sata Kiale Surama Mama 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 Sade Katiaya E Rezon Tobaya Italia Anduskaya Ita Ruzani Ante Ante Li Regusenia I possess my gates at the Rima Sontaya the gates into my life from the north all of my gates all of my gates all of my gates you forces of darkness you have no right concerning my gates Christ has redeemed me I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God I have been bought with a price I am a child of the Almighty God I am a seed of Abraham therefore you demonic spirits you have no right concerning my gates you cannot block my goodness you cannot block my blessings I rebuke you today in Jesus name lose your heart concerning my gates lose your grip concerning my gates I rebuke you in Jesus name I come against him by the force of the power of the Holy Ghost it is written greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world every demonic spirit every spirit of witchcraft every spirit of wizardry walking against my goodness today in the name of Jesus I subdue you in Jesus name I destroy your works in Jesus name Ale presone, ale chiri zuguro chiguro zugodo ye. Shi kotono kotono kotono, ajeli geru jeli geru jeli geru skaya. Shegulo ro bo 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 bo, shegulo ro panti alegezi alegeza, alegezi alingaso, alegezi alungaza, alenga sugezi zegriya. Agiri yo tombo tosi ye, akeke rusi amatunde ya. Shi prante lele maboshia, ya garia, ale lele lele bo bo shanta. He resate zate, he resita zita, he resoto zita, he resunta. He is at Alaska. He is on to Moira. Ajiro was on to ye. Ageli atushka. Ateri is on to Moyi. Ageri ban tangalushka. He le parosantia. Ageli ndo domosia. Jaru santa ye. Jaru sinta ye. Jaru sato ye. He resutanja ni ali ajiro mosia. He ye he is on to ya. He ke lura mita luja mi ya ye. Ageri is on to ya. Ageri is on to ye. Ageri asunta ya. Ageri is in ta ya. Ageri Lose your heart concerning my gates. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you forces of darkness. Take your hands off my gates. Take your dirty hands off my gates. In the name of Jesus. Je bate, je bato, je bati kaye, je parisaye, aji le rusoy, aji naturi, je raso sosomo, akileti. I take authority in the name of Jesus that is above every name. You foul devils, you foul demonic spirit, hanging around the gates into my life, hanging around the gates into house of praise, hanging around the gates into my ministry. I take authority over you right now. I am a seed of Abraham. 
If any man be, be Christ, he is a seed of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham says, I possess the gates of my enemy. If I possess the gates of my enemy, surely I possess my own gate. So I take authority over you right now. I bind you in Jesus' name. Lose your hold upon my gates. Lose your grip upon my gates. Lose your control over my gates. I subdue you today in Jesus' name. I take complete control. I take complete control over my gates. I take complete control over my gates. Ale embraço to my je pa ke remados kata. Ali pronto skata. Thank you Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Fiat home, you are expecting a package. Somebody comes and knocks on your door. Pack pack pack. And somebody walks up to the door and says, "Oh, I'm asking for Mr. XYZ." So, oh, sorry, Mr. XYZ doesn't live here. The package will go away. Those things are what is called every tongue that rises up against you, judgment. Those are forces. You see, when people in the natural oppose you concerning what belongs to you, they are only speaking on behalf of demonic spirits. We don't focus on the people in the natural because it's not against flesh and blood. But we have to take care of the evil spirits manipulating their mind. So you are going to, this is Isaiah 54 verse 17, you are going to condemn Every tongue that is rising up against your good news, every tongue, every demonic spirit putting it in the mind of people to speak against your good news, today we silence them. Today we silence them. Today I silence them. Mantari Shakataya. I silence them today. I silence them today. I silence them today. I silence them. Maro Santo Kodosh Kataya. Sheto Razita Ye Akeletia. I'm at home. I am at home in Christ Jesus. So I welcome my good news. I welcome my good news. Satan, you cannot turn away my good news. Every tongue that will speak against my good news, every tongue that will speak against my destiny, today I silence them in Jesus' name. Every demonic spirit speaking against my good news, speaking against my breakthrough, speaking against my favor, today may they be silenced in Jesus' name. Wherever they are, may they be silenced in Jesus' name. Wherever they are, every tongue that is speaking against the promises of God in my life, wherever they are located today, may they be silenced in Jesus name every demonic entity influencing people to speak against my dreams, to speak against my future, to speak against my destiny, wherever the demonic spirits are located, today may they be rendered powerless in Jesus name, be rendered powerless in Jesus name Anji Roma Zetanke Lebaye Ji pro ma ke soto yele, ji pro ma sekete yale, ja do ma pati yele, ji do ma kiatia, ji do ma taruzia, ji do ma telindo roboskaya. Come on, come on, somebody. Ja bile re be 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 be. Make le re brobo. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Je tale pra kobosketa ya. Le bo 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 bo, le bo 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 bo. Je bo sekata ya. Aye preke ya. Aye prayadi, aye praduya, aye priyada. Je lo 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 lo, je le 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 le, je le 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 baba. Robo satayi kege, ample rezoto yale. Je no matolo me siante, je no makoji ne makaji ne makaka deke ne ya. O jante rema zane ya, aye ketu oye. O lozo suami yate, aye risoni ya pia le, ma kotobo ya. You foul the money spirit. No, 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 no. You cannot speak against my destiny. I bind you in Jesus' name. You cannot speak against my favor. You cannot speak against my progress. I bind you in Jesus' name. Every demonic spirit, every foul devil speaking against my favor, speaking against my destiny, speaking against my progress. I bind you today. In the name of Jesus. Makali resuntayana. Eshke prakata. Every tongue that is risen up against me in judgment, I bind you in Jesus' name. Not so, not so, not so, not so, not so. In the name of Jesus. Every good news that is due to me, every good news due to my family, every good news due to my ministry, right now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit influencing people, every demonic spirit influencing people to speak against it to work against it i take authority over you foul spirits i bind you in jesus name 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 be rendered powerless in the name of jesus 
le bobo bobo surandi yale shakati le kene mashkaya ere broto ya ere broto yale ere bratu le yina ya lo pa setalema ere mble ke tondo koshkaya majige 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 chato toto mare padie i bind you in jesus name your foul spirit your unclean spirits rasuntaye rasinteya elibondo broto ba setalaina ajele ke rozo mateya Every, every, every demonic spirit, every demonic spirit working against my dreams, working against my future, working against my destiny by speaking against me, by speaking against my future. Today, in the name of Jesus, I bind the foul spirits in Jesus' name. I render you powerless in Jesus' name. Be rendered powerless in Jesus' name. Lose your hold in the name of Jesus. Everything evil spirits everything the spirits of witchcraft deceptive spirits i've spoken against my destiny against my destiny against my destiny against my future against my good news package today in the name of jesus let it be cancelled let it be nullified it's of no effect it is of no effect it is of no effect in the name of jesus thank you lord in jesus mighty name we are praying loud and clear in jesus name we pray whatever stands at the gates of your life that is turning away good news today i stand in the authority and the mandate that god has given me to empower people to achieve their dreams and to fulfill their destiny i command such forces to be subdued in jesus name I command all such forces to be subdued in the name of Jesus. May all such forces be subdued in the name of Jesus. You foul demonic familiar spirits that is hanging around that brother or sister that is shedding away their good news and turning away what belongs to them. Today you are rendered powerless. I command you to lose your hold. I command you to lose your hold. In the mighty name of Jesus, lose your hold. In the name of Jesus, lose your hold. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Listen, I saw clearly in my spirit a sister, a girl, that had leprosy all over her body. This is not physical leprosy. Leprosy all over her body, and people are just turning away. I saw black spots of leprosy, this thick, spreading all over her body. But you know, as I saw that, straight away, I had in my spirit that Naaman was given a new flesh. Naaman was given a new flesh. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Listen carefully. The disgrace and the shame that the enemy expected concerning you, that appointment is cancelled with the shame. You will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. This next prayer point, I don't need to encourage you. You are going to do this yourself. The Bible says, I have given you authority to step. To do what? To step. To do what? That's it. You see, you have to test scriptures the way they are. Don't be too smart for it. I've given you authority to do what? To step. So this is not the place just to pray. You are praying, you know, of course, you're transferring that. But you are doing what you are? I've given you authority to step upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy so that nothing will hurt you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is above every name, I begin to step upon it. Every power of the enemy, every serpent, every scorpion that is playing around to hurt me, to hurt my children, to hurt my wife, I step upon them today. Somebody step upon them. I step upon them today. Every serpent, every scorpion, everything designed to hurt my destiny, to hurt my children, to hurt my wife, to hurt my ministry, to hurt the house of praise, I step upon you today. I step upon you today by the power of God according to scripture. I step upon you today. You will not hurt me. I destroy you today. I have been given the mandate by God to bruise your head in Christ Jesus. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, I bruise the head of every serpent. I bruise the head of every scorpion. I bruise the head of every serpent. 
that is working against my destiny every serpent every scorpion working against my destiny working against my future working against my family working against house or place working against my wife oh i bruise your head tonight in jesus name jesus has given me the authority to step upon you every serpent under the green grass waiting to hurt me waiting to pounce against me waiting to pounce against my son waiting to pounce against my daughters today i step upon you i destroy you in the name of jesus i destroy you in the name of jesus somebody step on them don't get tired step on them step on them step on them by the authority of the word of god i step upon you tonight i destroy you tonight i destroy you tonight by the authority of the word of god i destroy you tonight so shall it be so shall it be in jesus mighty name we are praying Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11 Therefore your gates shall not be shut day and night They shall be open continually Come on they shall be open continue. Say it one more time They shall be open continue. Say it by faith They shall be open continue. This is the point right now We've received good news but it's now continuous good news Come on leave your hands now By faith I receive continuous good news Continuous good news Continuous good news Continuous good news Never ending good news Unlimited good news Oh yes, unlimited good news, never ending good news, continuous good news. Oh, in my ministry, continuous good news. They shall be open continually. Continuous good news, continuous good news, continuous good news. I receive it. Come on now, receive continuous good news. It's not just that something will work for you on a Monday. I will not work again on a Tuesday. It's continuous good news. I'm not going to be a one week wonder. I will not be a one month wonder. I will not be a one year wonder. But continuous good news. I shall be a wonder forever. I shall be a wonder forever. Continuous good news. I will not be a. I will not be a shooting star. No, 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 no. I will not be a one month wonder. I will not be a one week wonder. I will not be a one year wonder. I reject that in Jesus name. But continuous wonder. I shall be a continuous wonder. My family shall be a continuous wonder. I receive continuous good news. Ever flowing. Ever increasing good news. Ever increasing good news. Limitless good news. Limitless good news. Unending good news. I receive continuous good news. Continuous growth in the house of praise. Continuous growth in the house of praise. Continuous growth in the ministry. That God has entrusted into my hands. I receive it today. I receive it today. I receive it today. I receive it today. Continuous. Continuous. Unbreaking. Unending. Unbreaking. Unending. Uninterrupted good news. I receive it today. Unending good news. Unbreaking good news. Uninterrupted good news. Today I receive it. In the name of Jesus. I receive it today. By faith I receive it. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, so shall it be. Oh, I want you to expect good news tomorrow morning. You will receive a package tomorrow morning. You will receive a letter tomorrow morning. You will receive a text message tomorrow morning. In the name of Jesus, you will receive an email tomorrow morning. Pleasant surprises tomorrow morning. Pleasant surprises tomorrow morning. Right now, how beautiful upon the mountains is the feet of him that brings good news. The good news that is coming to your house, may it hasten into your house. May it hasten into your house. May it hasten into your life. 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 Whatever stopped your good news in time past, today we put a stop to it. In the name of Jesus, we put a stop to it. We put a stop to it. Please let your amen be loud and clear. You know, when you send a check to somebody in the mail, and somehow something happens to the check and they didn't receive it, you are expecting them to cash the check and something they don't receive. Then they call you. Just we have called on God today. Say, you promised me something, but I didn't get it. He says, Oh, you didn't get it. Something must have happened. I will cancel that one and I will reissue another one. The God that reissues good news. Whatever good news you have missed, whatever good news was interrupted and didn't get to your house, may it be reissued right now to you. May it be reissued right now to you. Oh, please say a big amen. May it be reissued right now to you. 
May it be reissued right now to you. Receive a restoration of it. Receive a restoration of it. Receive a restoration of it. In the name of Jesus. I'm speaking by what God has put in my spirit. Man. You will not be put to shame. No matter how many people are gathered waiting for you to share some bad news, that bad news will never come out of your mouth. You will not be put to shame. Your children will not be put to shame. Oh, please say amen to that. Under no circumstances shall you be put to shame. No matter what happens, your shame will be done to double honor. In the name of Jesus, no more reproach for you. Let your amen show you are receiving it. Whatever is hiding in your family, hiding in your business, hiding in your body that is working to bring shame to you, today we bind it in Jesus' name. Today we bind it in Jesus' name. You will be a carrier of good news. You will be a recipient of good news. You will carry good news. You will receive good news. You will carry good news. You will receive good news. You shall carry good news. You will receive good news. You will carry good news. Every seed, can you bring that to you for me? Every seed of bad news that has been planted in your life by anybody or by you yourself, today it is uprooted. It will not germinate. It will not germinate. It will not germinate. It will not germinate. It shall not germinate. Whatever seed of bad news has been planted, it shall not germinate. It shall not germinate. We remove it today in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Friends, God created the heavens. He created the earth in six days. I believe God, sir. I believe God. I speak by the authority of God. On or before 31st of the God. You will have something to celebrate. You will have something to shout about. You will have something to celebrate. You will have something to shout about. 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 By faith, if you believe with me now, that on or before 31st of August, I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know where it's coming from. I might not know what issue it is, but I know I'm going to have something to shout about right now. Why don't you give him a shout? <laughs> come on, come on, somebody, 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 give him a shout. Somebody, 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 give him a shout. An excited shout. A big, big shout. A great, great shout. Hey, big, 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 big shout. One more time, give him a shout.